Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 90 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case that was done with Dr. Nick Burke, illustrating how it can be very useful having two experienced operator, oper operators for complex CTO cases, and was put together by Dr. Peter Tidy. This was a patient who had an osteal RCA CTO that had been previously failed. He had patent LAD as well as circumflex vessels with septal and epicardial collateral supplying the right coronary artery. The RCA was occluded at its ostium, proximal to a previously placed stent. The occlusion length was long, 90 millimeters approximately, with a diffusely diseased distal vessel and septal and epicardial collaterals to the distal vessel. The plan was to try first retrograde through septal collaterals given the osteal occlusion, followed by undergrade wire escalation or undergrade dissection or re-entry. A careful microcatheter was advanced to a septal branch, followed by both surfing as well as contract injection. And finally, we were able using an XTR, filter XTR guide wire, to cross from the LAD into the right coronary in the right posterior lateral branch. We then advanced the caravel all the way to the distal right coronary artery, and then starting knuckling with a filter XT guide wire and a pilot 200 into the mid coronary right coronary artery. We're able to advance to the proximal where we had difficulty advancing further, likely because of the previously placed stand. We did a micro injection, the so-called Carlino technique, to confirm that we were in the right space and to help modify the plaque and help us advance a little bit further into the proximal right coronary artery. And then eventually we were able to advance the Kevin microcatheter over the pilot 200 all the way to the right coronary ostium in the subintimal position. We were, however, unable to retrograde cross the occlusion due to tortuosity. And we spent a lot of time trying to advance an undergrade guide wire, more than one hour. But eventually we were able to advance an undergrade pilot 200 guide wire into the proximal right coronary artery in the subintimal space, and then following balloon predilatation, we advanced an undergrade guideliner into the proximal right coronary artery. And then we performed guideliner reverse card by advancing a retrograde pilot 200 guide wire into the undergrade guideliner microcatheter. And after doing that, we were able to externalize uh, the guide wire and at this point, we thought that the case was done. We predilated and then placed two drug eluting stents. However, after postdilation, there was a perforation in the mid right coronary artery, which occurred after a balloon that was then balloon ruptured during the postdilation. Like every perforation, we inflated a balloon to seal the perforation and prevent the formation of a pericardial effusion. And then we did multiple attempts to deliver cover stents, which were unsuccessful, likely because of um, under expansion of the stents proximally due to the previous stent, as well as calcification. We were finally able, with a lot of difficulty, to uh, deliver an balloon, which um, eventually improved the stenosis, and then we were able to advance a guideliner to the mid right coronary artery and deploy a graft master cover stand at the site of the perforation. It is important to know that an eight French guideliner is needed to deliver the covered stands. They would not fit through a six and a seven French guideliner with the potential exception of a seven French if they're preloaded before the guideliner enters the guide. Unfortunately, despite placing the cover stand, there continued to be some extravasation in the mid right coronary artery. And that is why we decided to place a second cover stand, which uh, once again was done using the guideliner. It is interesting that we had an externalized guide wire, but still we did not have the possibility to advance the cover stands, showing how difficult it can be to deliver those uh, bulky devices. Eventually, we were able to deliver the second cover stand, which was deployed. There was still some staining in the subintimal space, but there was no pericardial effusion by transthoracic echo. And it appeared that the space there was probably an aneurysm or a pseudoaneurysm formed around the right coronary artery. After multiple prolonged inflations, 
there was no active extravasation and the procedure was stopped. It was a complex procedure taking several hours, 382 minutes of fluid time, half a liter of contrast, 141 minutes of fluid time. However, it was successful and the patient did have an eventful recovery. Repeat echo done the following day did not demonstrate a pericardial effusion. Once again, suggesting that it was probably loculated um, um, pseudoaneurysm at the site of perforation. This case provides several lessons. The first one is that for flush osteal occlusions, the retrograde approach can be very valuable for achieving success. The guideline reverse card is very useful for a reverse wiring through azotortuosity. Delivering a covered stent in case of perforation can be very important, but can be difficult because these are bulky devices. And using a guideliner, specifically an 8 French guideliner, can be useful for delivering those devices. In the end, it appears that it was likely an, a pseudoaneurysm forming after the balloon ruptured in the mid right coronary artery, also emphasizing the importance of doing immediate angiography if there is balloon rupture in the coronary artery. Thank you.